All right, so you have your image, you've fully edited that image inside of Lightroom, and now you wanna export it, but you wanna export it specifically to a certain size or for social media. And you wanna know the export settings to do that well so that when it ends up on Facebook or Instagram, it doesn't look like pixelated and weird and that you don't have a lot of resizing happening as you upload to those apps because then your images look different and that's frustrating. So I'm gonna take you behind the scenes inside of Lightroom. I'm gonna break down the settings that I would recommend that you use for social media and to resize for anything that you'd really need so that you understand the export settings here inside of Lightroom Classic. So let's dive in inside of a recent gallery that I have here from uh, headshots that I took of myself. You can actually see the video on my channel of how I did these in my living room and just get a little behind the scenes look. So let's say for example, you're here, you have your images and you're ready to export. If you do command A, you can select everything in your catalog that you want to bring out, or you can just hit the one image, hit shift, and then click to the ones that you want. So then I decided I'm only gonna select these four. Okay, so you have a couple of options for how you're going to export these images. If you right click on the images and you come down here, you can hit export. You also have the option here to hit the export in the lower left-hand corner. So we wanna export these images. Now you need to decide a couple of things to get started. The first one is just gonna say, where do you want this image to go after you've saved it? So I'm gonna go ahead and let it just go to the desktop. You can save it in the same folder as the original photo. So wherever that source photo is that you've been editing, you can go ahead and put the final image in that same folder, or you can choose a folder that you have in existence somewhere that is right here. I like to just put it on my desktop when I'm going for social media because I'm gonna immediately want those images. So go ahead and make those selections. You can put it into a subfolder. So I might just say like Instagram. So you've decided where your image is gonna go and that it's gonna go into a folder. Now you have the option to rename your file. If you wanna go ahead and rename it to a custom name, I might just say like new, headshots 2022 and I might be like for Instagram or something like that. This is an option. You don't have to do this, but it does help when you're trying to go find these files later. I especially think this is important if you're resizing images right now that you want to put on a blog or your website and you want to make sure that the file names are search engine friendly, but also just easier for you to figure out where they are and what they're doing for you in your business. So if you're resizing for your website, I highly recommend that you at least name it the name of your website or business. Okay, so then we're gonna go down to file settings. You're gonna select JPEG because that's what we're gonna be largely using. If you'd need something else, they do have other options, but JPEG is just super universal. And we're gonna leave the color space for sRGB, which is the most commonly used color space profile. And it's gonna be very versatile, I guess. And for everything that we're doing today, that's exactly what we're gonna need. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the quality at 100, and I'm not gonna limit the file size right now. I think the most important thing to be looking at when you're exporting for social media, when you want something for Facebook or Instagram is going to be the image sizing component here. Now I'm gonna resize to fit the short edge because all of these images, I want them to be sized beautifully for Instagram. And Instagram likes the 1080 pixels size for the short edge. And so that's gonna make sure that all these images that are in portrait format are sized properly. The other thing I'm gonna wanna change is resolution. I'm gonna turn this down to 72 pixels per inch PPI. This is basically gonna make it so that it looks nice on a screen, but it's not gonna look nice if it's ever sized a lot bigger. Like if you're trying to stretch this image or if someone grabs this image and tries to print it, it's not gonna look great. So it actually protects your work a little bit. So if you're resizing images for your website or your blog, that's another really great way to protect your work and make sure that if someone steals it, they can't do a lot with it. It looks nice on a screen in exactly the sizes you've chosen, but other than that, they can't do a lot. Now, if this is for Facebook, Facebook's parameters are uh, 2048 pixels wide. Um, so I would say like on the short edge, I would change this to 2048, for example. And you're just gonna have to decide what image sizing you're gonna be doing for each platform. So I know these things can sometimes change. I like to go on Hootsuite and a couple of other sources. I'll link them down below so that you can see the most up-to-date sizing for every platform you're trying to look for. Okay, output sharpening. Now this is up to you. You can sharpen this for screen. Um, of course, it's gonna be for screen 
screen if it's social media and you can change the amount of sharpening that you're going to see in your images. I recommend you just play with this. Export your images at low, medium, high and see what you're going to see in the final image. If you do low, it's almost indiscernible in my opinion. Good option if you don't want it to be too intense. I personally don't play around with sharpening a whole lot. I like my images to look the way that they looked in the editing software. And then metadata is the information that is included with the file. So this is basically going to carry some information about your camera, your settings, where you took the images, for example. And it could lead to some information in your image that you honestly don't want floating around on the internet. So you can change and say, I just want the copyright information to be included in my image. I want my contact info and copyright. And you know, there's a lot of other options here as well. So go ahead and select this, decide how much of your information you want to be saved on the file. And then you have a watermark option here. Basically you could add a custom watermark with your name. I don't do that, but if you did want to watermark your photos, this is exactly where you would do it. And then this is going to ask you for post-processing. What do you want Lightroom to do after it exports this image? And I have it set to do nothing because I'm making it go to the desktop and I'm going to grab those images and airdrop them to myself. Again, your images are going to go wherever you decided here at the top. And then this is going to tell Lightroom, what do you want to happen next? So sometimes people will have an image open in a new application afterwards, like Photoshop, for example, or if you have another step where you want to add graphics to your image and you have another app for that. That's where you would go ahead and set that for, for the most part. That is not something that I do. So I'm just going to have it set to do nothing and I'm going to go ahead and hit export. So then you'll see here at the top left hand corner, the files are exporting. It's four files. Those are going to go to my desktop where I'm going to go ahead and grab those files. And then I'm going to give you some tips for how to make sure that you get the exact resolution that you've chosen and that it doesn't get messed up in the transferring process to your phone. All right, so we have your images resized from Lightroom and we have the size that you need for social media. Now you need to get them onto your phone. So one thing that you don't wanna do is just text these images to yourself if you want the image size to remain exactly the same and the exact parameters that you want. So I recommend you do AirDrop if you have Apple or you use a service like Dropbox or Google Drive so that you can bring the app up on your phone and then you can put it on your computer. That's gonna make sure that you preserve the exact size that you're working with here. And this is true for, especially if you've ever grabbed images off your phone and then you've tried to send them to your computer and print them and then you get that like low res warning. It's because when you text an image, a lot of times that compresses the file tremendously. It's like an automatic setting in our phone in messaging and even when you grab an image off social media it's often a very compressed file airdrop dropbox google drive all great options for getting those images onto your phone and making sure that they stay exactly the way that you wanted them to from lightroom so i hope this was helpful for you if you learned something give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button. I'm going to have a few more Lightroom videos coming your way here in the next couple of weeks. And I would really appreciate it if you joined me for those as well. All right. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye guys.